So a while back, we did a couple of videos on this Xbox 70 gigabyte AOS motherboard. They thought we break the motherboard and we couldn't get a video out. It had something to do with the PCIe riser cable that came with the case. We were using the Fantex Evolve Shift Air. And so when all else had failed, we shipped it out. I was working with a, one of the members here in our community, Sparta Rules. We shipped it out to Gigabyte and it was damaged in the shipping process. It had this superficial uh, like vent or dent on the side of the motherboard and while the motherboard was perfectly fine when it was boxed up and sent to be looked at or sent to be RMA'd, Gigabyte straight up was like, nah. But at the time, I had deep dove into the potential issue with that motherboard. And to get to the CMOS battery, it's a little tricky because it's essentially underneath the VRM and the input output shield on the side of the motherboard. But lo and behold, when I put everything back together and tried to use it with the 5800X and the RTX 3060 for that build, we still weren't getting the video out, still was getting a black screen, nothing changed. Nothing helped it, so we were going to send the board back, maybe thinking it was bricked or there was something else going on that was beyond our realm of or capability of fixing, maybe like a manufacturing defect with the board. So, hop the CMOS battery out. Same results. Same results. I'm thinking you're going to need another board. But I was able to get to the cord to unplug the CMOS battery, left it unplugged for about 10 15 minutes, put everything back together, and still no video out. Everything came came on um, it didn't even like try to post like sh turn on three times and shut down three times it just it just still wouldn't give me any video out yeah looks like we're going to need another board so spider rules decided to essentially donate to the channel and i've held on to it and i kind of speculated for a minute there that the potential issue with the motherboard was that before when the BIOS was updated and somewhere along the lines the like it wasn't corrupt but it was the wrong BIOS flashed before that particular CPU it reverted the motherboard back to its original factory settings not only that it also made it incompatible with the PCIe riser that came with the Fantex Shift Evolve so not only was there a potential two-way street where either one of those could have resolved the issue I essentially narrowed it down to I needed a 3200G to flash the BIOS or to at least see if I can get a video out because that motherboard only really supports at factory settings a Zen Plus CPU and I couldn't use the PCIe lane or I wanted to rule out the PCIe lane so I said okay that has to be a CPU with integrated graphics. So I headed over to the Hughes market and long story short, I picked up a AMD 3200G Zen Plus base CPU, four core, four threads. It's going to be Vega 8 and it's integrated CPU or integrated APU, so it has integrated graphics at about 1.2 gigahertz. So it's not bad. It's somewhere along the lines of maybe an RX 550 or an RX 470, somewhere along the lines there. You're not really going to get performance outside of 1080p, but it's a solid CPU and it'll get the job done, especially if you're looking to play games that aren't as graphically demanding or you want a game at 720p, low to medium settings, and that's all you're expecting. Or you can always start off with a CPU like that and add a graphics card down the road. But after picking up the CPU, I went ahead and checked it out. Everything looked good. The seller didn't clean the thermal paste off, so I went ahead and took care of that for him. No much, no fuss. Got that dropped it into the motherboard. Went ahead and slapped on some thermal paste, nothing fancy there. Installed the single 4 gigabyte sticker RAM because again, I just wanted to see if one, this motherboard would work or would that dent, would that, you know, crack side prevent it from turning on? Like, did it, you know, did it damage it beyond repair and would it still function as it should? I went ahead and plugged in the 24 pin ATX power cable, the 8 pin CPU cable up there on the motherboard as well. CPU fan cable was plugged in, everything was good to go. We had our power supply unit, the G3, all good and ready to go. The wattage might be a little bit overkill, but again, this is just a temporary superficial setup to see if I'll be able to get this motherboard to turn on, let alone, again, function as it should, like a, you know, like a perfectly normal motherboard. But once that was all said and done, I quickly looked over the system, made sure everything was good to go, went ahead and gave it a quick jump, waited a while, and a while, and a little bit longer. And what do you know, it turned on right to the BIOS. 
as it should. Yeah, I didn't plug up the keyboard and mouse because I, again, I just wanted to see, just all, all I needed was the HDMI cable and make sure everything else was connected properly just to see if I can get the damn thing to turn on. And we got a video signal out. This is something we weren't able to achieve and I guess you can call it part two of this motherboard's journey here on the channel. So once I was able to verify that I can get a video out now and you know the everything is initially, I guess, at face value is working as it should, I went ahead and plugged in the keyboard and mouse, jumped right into the BIOS and everything looked good, temperatures looked good. So the cooler's working as it should, no issues there. Uh, the CPU's being registered as it should, or one stick of memory is being registered as it should. I didn't connect the storage device because again, I just wanted to see if I can get to the BIOS. So I went ahead and connected the 500 gigabyte Western Digital SSD I was using on a previous setup and got into Windows, everything looked good. All the programs are recognized as it should. I even went ahead and connected to my home Wi-Fi just to make sure that there was no damage there. It connected perfectly fine as you can see here. I was able to go ahead and browse the web, head over to YouTube, even give a quick video a watch. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so now. But yeah, so turns out I was correct. Turns out my theory was right. After I went ahead and installed the 3200G, the motherboard had reset and set itself to the factory settings. A combination of flashing the BIOS to the original BIOS that came with that motherboard and using the 3200G allowed me to get back into the configuration and get back into the BIOS and get everything set up the way it should. So now I can use this motherboard with a slew of Ryzen based CPUs all the way up to say the 5950X or CPU I have kind of had my eyes on for a future build. So do keep a lookout for that. This Gigabyte Aorus X570 motherboard still has plenty of juice left in the tank. Still very much a high end system. It's still on the AM4 platform, but like I said in the previous videos, that socket still has plenty of life left in it. I see CPUs over in the used market and still over being sold at Micro Center for some super low prices. If you're looking to, you know, connect on some solid price to performance, the AM4 socket is still a solid way to go. And I also want to highlight that this also goes to demonstrate how resilient computer hardware or computer components can be. I mean, this motherboard had a dent that about a, uh, I guess you could say about a centimeter long dent that curved it just a bit. And if you look at it, you might think, damn, this thing, you know, it's damaged, it's not going to turn on, or maybe it's going to have some type of weird electrical spike, or it just won't function. Maybe you won't get a video out, or maybe it won't register your graphics card or RAM. But this just goes to show how resilient computer hardware can be and just how important it is to never rule out your hardware until you can at least get it tested out by a professional or you test it yourself and you explore all possibilities. That could be the issue. And then you address them one by one. You make the change and then you test to see if you get a different result. I did this previously, but the one constant that made all the difference is I didn't have the 3200G, which again, I picked up over on the used market for 35 USD, talked the seller down. It was up there for 45. I said, we take 30, counter with 35. I said, sure, that's a solid. I mean, it originally went for about 120 or 130, something along the lines there. So, and even now it has a resale value over on the used market for about twice that. So I think I made out pretty well there. Worst case scenario, we can use it to flash future motherboards, either for clients or for other builds here in the lab, which I know we changed the name, but I promise you we are still inside the lab. But that's all I got for this one, y'all. It's been your boy Tech with Terrence. I do hope to catch y'all on the next one. So until then, be easy.